Things get heated on paternity court. That's the case, my son still be going over to your house. What do you mean? Because I help you. Whatever. Help me do what? You, you need a day, you need a child care still? to go to work. Okay, so I work. Why do you, why? How would you know? Was no, I'm not gonna figure out. How do you know? How do you right. know? I was right there, so therefore I don't know. Your son wanted me there. You were out. Your son wanted me there. One at a time. The most difficult cases to handle are the ones where a mother swoops in proclaiming that a dead man fathered her child. Miss Willingham has come to court for pretty much the same reasons today. She wants to prove that late Nathaniel Allen fathered her baby Nicorian. What has this past year and a half been like <laughs> since Nathaniel's family denies your son? It's been hard. Um, it's just basically me. I mean, I'm a strong, independent woman um, of my children. I don't ask for help. So as far as depending on the system, I don't know where they're getting that from. I, don't even, I barely call them and ask them for anything. Meanwhile, Nathaniel's sister, Miss Griffin, is 100% sure that the only reason Miss Willingham keeps chasing them is because she's in it for the money. She keeps upsetting their family, knowing very well that they're grieving the loss of their brother. About six weeks after, my son had passed, he come to me and says, uh, you have to go in and help me, y'all need to help me. And I said, what do I need to do? So she took me to the social security office and they told us she had to get letters. So I wrote a letter and a couple of them. And no, I didn't believe this. It. It's my grandson. You say you just don't believe. No. That letter really changes things for Miss Willingham. According to her, she really needed that letter so she could go to social security and access services. But when she asked Nathaniel's family to write the letter, Instead of helping her out, they caused more trouble. Before he passed, he wanted me to give him the information so he could put them on this 401k plan. Well, Even me and Nathan, you had a conversation too, and he told me that he didn't think that Corian was his son. He said that it was not his son. Because Nathaniel has caught you and in, in this other person. Lord, there's all sorts of crazy going on in court. The Griffins have a completely different story to tell. According to them, their boy Nathaniel was in a relationship with someone else when Decorian was born. So it's not even possible the child is his. Your son hurted me. No. What do you mean? You he know your son, son wasn't by like, going whatever. With other guys. Other guys? Yes. No, your son was a whore. Because you're okay. not. Okay, whatever. All right, let's, let's be respectful. Yeah. Let's be respectful. Was. You can't yeah, call you're not. You should be up in Hold on, hold on. Come on, honey. He called me every day. Lady, lady. All of the accusations from the Griffins really teared down Miss Willingham. The truth, according to her, is that Nathaniel left her for another woman, and when she took a pregnancy test, she called him to tell him that the baby could be his. My son asked for a DNA. No, that's not the case. We couldn't afford a DNA at that time. Because he came and asked me too. And I told him, I said, whenever, whenever you like, I would go. Yeah, I wasn't trying to help me because y'all not trying to really be in these kids' life, period. That's not the case. And, and I really on the don't day care that she do. had the baby, he didn't even go to the hospital because he said it wasn't under his. He's a liar. These two women won't stop fighting with each other. Judge Lauren has to ask the court to order at least several times to make them stop. Miss Willingham opens up about how selfish Nathaniel really was, and she had to go through the entire pregnancy all alone, without any support from him. Hey, if that's the case, my son still be going over to your house. What do you mean? Because I help you. Whatever. Help me do what? You what need a day, you need a child care still? to go to work. Okay, so I work. Okay, okay I watch you while it. you go to work. Whatever. I didn't want you to lose your Ladies, time. I need you to talk one Whatever. at a time, but I do want to understand this because this is interesting testimony. With the cousin's testimony in court, it seems that the Griffins really don't have much ground to stand on. Meanwhile, Miss Willingham's been enduring all of this mental torture for so long, she deserves some peace. The clock's ticking, and the results reveal the truth. Latricia Griffin and Nicorian Allen are related. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready to witness an exploding showdown in paternity court? This time, it's two grandmothers feuding over a toddler's paternity. Miss Johnson and her mother are prepared to fight Jalen Taylor and his mother and fire up the court. Miss Johnson, you and your mother say even though the father of your two-year-old son, Jaden Taylor, is a deadbeat dad, he has never denied him up until a couple of weeks ago. And today you claim to have medical evidence that proves Mr. Taylor is the father of your son. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Johnson and Mr. Taylor had been co-parenting the two-year-old boy. Then, five days ago, out of nowhere, Ms. Johnson receives a strange text from Mr. Taylor. Suddenly, he refuses to look after the baby and wants a DNA test. 
Turns out an unknown woman told some big secret to Mr. Taylor. Why did you send this out the blue? It was actually a week ago. Um, me and my son was in the, in the house playing around. Um, I was told someone was outside for me. I went outside. A girl told me she had something to tell me about my baby, my baby mother. She said Miss Johnson told another girl that uh, that Jaden was in mine. Once that woman revealed that baby Jaden's true father could be someone else, Mr. Taylor opens up to the court about how Miss Johnson has, on numerous occasions, blackmailed him. That the baby's not really his. What's going on here? That's not your baby. That's not your baby. That you right. That's not your baby. Somebody else the daddy. Somebody else is the daddy. Take him up off of your. That's what you could do. Take him all the way completely off of your. Period. Take him off. No, and I'm gonna come get my own baby. How about that? That's mine. That's my baby. Miss Johnson, is that you? Yes. What a shocker! Here, Miss Johnson and her mother are protesting that Jaden is indeed Jalen's son. But then the video recording as evidence just says otherwise. What do these two women want? On top of that, Miss Johnson's mother justifies her daughter's behavior, saying she did it in anger. He does nothing. He just, you nothing. know. That's a lie. What you I do? I do everything for What him. proof? Where's the proof? You ain't seen him in five months, so what you um, do? I have a lot of proof. I sent okay. it. Where is it? Can you see it? Can you, can you got any receipts? No. Oh. You ain't got that? So wait a minute. That's what I thought. He don't have to have receipts. She know we do for No, for free. That free. you don't know nothing. Do. It don't, what do you do, you free, I right. buy you him stuff. After that really heated duel between grandmothers, everyone's on the edge of their seats. Miss Johnson claims that Mr. Taylor's a deadbeat dad, but his mother says that it's Miss Johnson who's failed as a mother. But Miss Johnson reveals a new bomb. Mr. Taylor refused to see Jaden for five months. Actually, the court sent in a paper saying I had to go take a DNA test. I went down there to take a DNA test. After I left, I messaged Ms. Johnson and told her that she was supposed to come with me to take the DNA test for my son. After that, she said, I told her she had to go down there and reschedule a schedule one for him. She never he only went because the child support it. started sending him letters in the mail. Yep. That's why he went yep. to be truthful. Another shocking revelation comes when Ms. Johnson reveals the true reason she never showed up for the scheduled DNA a test. According to her, Mr. Taylor not only did it to get out of child support, but in his heart, he knew baby Jaden was his son. But for Mr. Taylor, it meant something different. I always been around him. Like he was always, he was always with me. He, like she said, she, he's always, he's all over my Facebook videos, pictures, I like little conversations we have. I post them on Facebook and stuff like that. So how is it that some one person out of the blue can walk up to you and exactly. just say, you know what? Exactly. That baby you've been with for two years, that's not your child. Exactly. Judge Lauren scolds Miss Johnson by reminding her men may forget a lot of things, but they never forget if you tell them that. They're they're not the father. Those are some loaded words. Jaden has a lot in common with his dad, but the answer to these grandmother's paternity doubts lie in that envelope. Mr. Taylor, you are the father. Like I told you. No, no, no. Like if you're not gonna, uh-uh. Don't start that nonsense. Thank you. Don't start that nonsense. Can I go to the When I gave you a chance to say something, you ain't had nothing to say. The case of Mr. Jackson against his own daughter, Miss Jackson, is a strange one. But it's more than enough to add fuel to the fire of their paternity doubts. Mr. Jackson claims he's been forced into being Miss Jackson's father for the past 41 years. But today, he's had enough. Ms. Jackson, you say Mr. Jackson is the only father you've ever known, and over the last 41 years, he has treated you like a second-class citizen. You say you have no doubt Mr. Jackson is your father, and you intend to prove it today. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, Your Honor. So, what exactly are Mr. Jackson's woes? Being a father to Ms. Jackson has taken a huge toll on his life. It became a burden in every way imaginable. He's not doing well mentally, and he had to spend a huge sum of money raising her. But most of all, she's the reason he's got a pacemaker in his heart. How long have you been paying support, sir? I've been paying support since I was maybe 30, Your Honor. I, I, I started working um, for a, a private contractor for 18 years, Your Honor. I did not know that I owed child support. And I get a job with a paycheck. It's when I find out I owe child support. But he's not exactly an innocent bystander here. Ms. Jackson reveals that since she turned 10, Mr. Jackson has been telling her harsh things, like how her mother is a promiscuous woman who slept around with multiple men. 
Who says those things to a little girl? I was always feeling like I was just someone there who he had a relationship with my mom. What was the nature of the relationship with Ms. Jackson's mother? At the time, I was married, and I knew it was wrong, but I did it. So what happened when she told you she was pregnant? I told her it was not my child, Your Honor. Then, Mr. Jackson puts his foot down and claims that he never even signed Ms. Jackson's birth certificate. His real name is Charlie Jackson, but the birth certificate says Charles Jackson. And the only person who called him Charles was Miss Jackson's mother. What can Miss Jackson say to that one? Why he never treated me like a daughter, since he has so much love in his heart? Why was I always treated like little trash off the street? No, I've reached out to her at times and times, but she, she goes into a shell where she don't talk to nobody, she don't call nobody. Miss Jackson breaks down that she can't be with good men because of Mr. Jackson. He gave her so many issues that now she can't ever be in a functional relationship. Mr. Jackson says that he never even knew she was going through so much. Moreover, Mr. Jackson thinks because she can't stutter, she can't be his daughter. And during his testimony, he has talked about all of his children suffer from stuttering. Is stuttering an inherited trait? Frequently it is, and it has a strong, there is a strong genetic component with stuttering. About 60% of people who stutter have family members that stutter as well. Eventually, Judge Lauren calls in Mr. Jackson's witness. And guess who it is? It's his stepson, Mr. Johnson. The judge asks him a lot of questions to cross-check whatever Mr. Jackson said in court up until now. Then she starts asking him about Miss Jackson. When you saw Mr. Ja Ms. Jackson, who did you think she was? More like a friend. So you don't believe your father, Mr. Jackson, would have denied Miss Jackson if he truly felt she was his biological daughter? No, he wouldn't have. Because you are not, in fact, his biological child. No, I'm not. But he raised you as his own. Yes. It's been a little bit too much for both Mr. Jackson and Miss Jackson. Witnesses and experts have been brought in, yet the only way to provide either of them any consolation is to finally open up the brown package. Will the results help save their failing relationship? Only one way to find out. Mr. Jackson Jr., you are her father. Sorry. I'm so sorry. All the best fights happen when there's a cheating scandal. But there's something even worse than that. It's when you think your brother might be the actual father of your child. Mr. Vogel's come into court to prove that Miss Vogel has been lying to him about their son, William. Mr. Vogel, who do you believe his father is? My brother, David. Oh! She had sex with my brother in a car, in my car in a parking lot in Janesville, Wisconsin. Okay, wait a minute. Just take me back. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but uh, there was no sex in a car. It was under a bridge. My son is a bridge, baby. <laughs> well, that definitely has the entire court rolling in laughter. Right after their divorce, Mr. Vogel went down to Kentucky to see Miss Vogel. That's when she came out to him about having slept with his brother under a bridge. Once he lined up the dates, it was clear William wasn't his kid. You married his brother? Yeah, three years after I divorced him. How, how do you get to a point where you're going to sleep with your husband's brother? Well, the bridge thing, he, I mean, he treated me better. He was good to me. And he just was that smooth that he just talked me right out of my riches, <laughs> literally. But the truth now lies in how William tells the entire story. He tells Judge Lauren that when he was five, he used to think that his uncle David was his father. After all, that's who Miss Vogel was married to at the time. Then one day, she tells William that actually, his real dad could be Mr. Vogel, AKA Daniel. I have a young man standing in my courtroom, quite frankly, that says he hasn't had a secure thought in years. No, he hasn't. Because he doesn't have a firm foundation. No, he because doesn't. he doesn't know who his father is. It's like changing by the decade. Yeah. One decade, he has one father. Next. The next decade, that father is his uncle, and then the uncle is the father. It starts getting really intense once William's asked to share his experience of having to go back and forth between two men. According to William, Mr. Vogel's actually a wonderful man, and not at all like how his mother's telling the story. Who's the truly honest person in this case, then? 
Could William be biased? He got to see me once in a while. It wasn't very often. The majority of the time living with David, I had actually been moved around from state to state. We really didn't stay in one place for a very long period of time. So my understanding of it was David was my father because he was the one raising me, but Daniel was my biological father. Eventually, everything comes out in the open when Mr. Vogel starts sharing the dates. He tells the entire court how Miss Vogel admitted to sleeping with David on the 19th of February, 1984, the same day Mr. Vogel was trying to celebrate his birthday. That's one way of hurting your then-husband. I have beat myself up for many years trying to figure out the difference between this, the timeline, and everything else. Okay, let, let's walk timeline. through I've this. I've walked through the dates. I've done everything for Walk years. through the dates with me. Walk through the dates with me. She told me February 19th of 84. That was the story back then. February 19th of 84 was what? Was when her and my brother had sexual relations. The main problem here is that because of all this confusion, it's Mr. Vogel who's been paying William's child support since 1990, even when he believes that he's not the boy's father. And now, Mr. Vogel has three of his own children to take care of, so all of these finances have really taken a toll on him. Has any of this testimony affected your belief? Because you've told him back and forth. Is it just because you've just always been confused? Yes, Your Honor, it is, because I just don't know. Well, that's why we're here. Daniel, I thank you for that. That's okay. That's all forgiven, Donna. It's forgiven. Has been, you know that. Now that's the kind of stuff I like to see under the bridge, Rome. <laughs> so, before things could get any worse, Judge Lauren mediates a kind of truce between these three. But it still doesn't take away the fact that poor William had to grow up feeling so uncertain about the identity of his own father. Who's the uncle here, and who's the father? Mr. Daniel Vogel, you are his father. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Finally back.